the next so the next uh, talk is by vijay kumar and his topic okay you got a tablet awesome round of applause uh, excuse me what is your name thank you ashok okay so once more okay okay so the next talk is by vijay kumar and his topic is bitten by python um this talk is going to be a beginner's uh, talk and i hope there is some uh, thing to learn for the advanced uh, users too uh, let's get into the talk so uh, I, all of you know that python is fun but i had this question is python uh, a fun language right uh, let's uh, try to answer this question now i started using python uh, when i was back in college and uh, i used it primarily for scripting um, my day to activities and for some of my engineering assignments it was fun language to program in most of the scripts i wrote was like hundred lines and uh, less maybe and in, it simplified most of my work so it was a fun language yes now for, after graduation i joined a company and my first day at work i had to um, there was a issue that uh, the people were facing there there was a field issue that they wanted to debug and uh, they had to parse the log file that was coming out from the system and uh, the existing tool did not provide sufficient uh, support to do that so i said oh i'll do that for you i know python i can do this in uh, you know xyz hours and i wrote a code to actually do what they want and it worked we tested it uh, uh, and then when the script went to the field and uh, people who really wanted to use the script it blew up in the field and i felt bad how things turned out right uh, it was first day in office i wanted to prove myself and then things uh, turned out to be bad so uh, i checked out the code and saw what was the problem now this was the code i wanted right right uh, this is like uh, if some condition do some statements and then outside this if block is another statement now after uh, all this testing i you know uh, i think i have this thing to make things uh, perfect and i write comments add documentation was trying to clean up the code and you know pay paid compliance pile in compliance and then what i found was in the actual code that actually was shipped to the customer in uh, this was how it looked like so in the act of actually trying to make my code perfect i had accidentally inserted a tab over here so the the thing that was supposed to be outside if block went inside if block and then the code failed now this was back somewhere uh, when git did not exist we had only cvs and you can you do cvs on a desktop and so um, you could have identified it uh, and this kind of problems occur frequently uh, i think even experienced programmers uh, sometimes come Uh, come across such problems uh, and there were other problems also i faced with python uh, for example uh, this is another problem i generally come across so there is this uh, class where you have this init function where you're trying to set up three attributes server username password and inside this reconnect you are setting up this attribute again you are assigning this value to attribute and then you can see there's a spelling mistake over there and this will result in creating a, a separate different attribute and this is another problem that's very very hard to debug uh, you know you have to uh, you know uh, uh, spend hours uh, wasting time debugging where you make the spelling mistake um uh, then there's another problem that i generally come across even in a production ready code uh, is this so let's say there's a function to read a file and you open the file fine read it and then you have an exception handling very good uh, you're checking for errors fine and then uh, once you're done with the code you close the uh, file but in the in the exception handling part you are trying to print the log message right and you're when you're logging to the uh, 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 you, you you specify the file name and the variable you're specifying is incorrect now when you're testing this manually uh, it'll always go to the this uh, you know the proper uh, nice path and you don't get this uh, error scenario at all and this never triggers but at some point let's say in your uh, uh, in when your code is running in production it will go to this path and then if this is a server program the server will crash right so this is something very dangerous uh, because that path is something that will occur very rarely and if there's a typo over there then things can go bad in a production code now problems like these made me question whether python is really useful for uh, uh, you know really complex uh, a large team sizes so when the team size increases 
can Python scale to accommodate multiple members in a single team, right? Uh, or is it really required to have a safety net of a compiler? These like, kind of uh, issues can be easily like, found out by, it could be found out by compilers uh, um, like the Java compiler. If you're writing in Java, the compiler itself will report such issues to you. But uh, with Python, you don't have the safety net of a compiler. So I had uh, this uh, questions deep down within me. Is really Python uh, safe? Is it uh, scalable? Will it scale with theme size? Or will it fall flat on its face? Uh, I realize that Python has too much power. It gives you too much power. It gives you too much f uh, 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 flexibility and power. And uh, like Uncle Ben said to Peter Parker, with great powers comes great responsibility. So what's the responsibility that we need to have when you write Python code? It gives us power, but what's the responsibility that we have to give back? Unit testing. Um, the, the testing that we generally do with our code is what people call integration testing. You run your program, give inputs manually, see if it works, and if it works, it's fine. That kind of testing is what we call integration. You take the entire application as a whole and test it as a whole. Uh, but that's not sufficient in Python. Like you've seen earlier, there are problems that can go unnoticed when you're doing integration testing. So uh, unit testing is uh, uh, you test each and every module. People know what is unit testing. Uh, the important thing about unit testing is you mark out all the external dependencies, networks, databases, serial ports, are all marked out, and then you only test your code in memory, no external accesses whatsoever. And since it runs in memory, it's uh, blazing fast. Um, to implement unit testing, your code should not look like this. It should not even be a maze. It should be written like this. You should have one layer at the bottom, a uh, layer of modules, and top of that, another layer of modules that access the layer below it, and so on. So if you have written your code this way, it's well and uh, good f for unit testing, or else uh, writing code like this will make it really hard to write unit test cases. Uh, but there are lots of myths about unit testing. Uh, I'll just uh, mention a few of them over here and I give links to where you can find more information about them. One is like, people say that when you're interfacing with serial ports and things like that, you can't do unit testing. You can do unit testing with them. Uh, there is some module called mock, which is now within the Python 3 standard library itself. And uh, this is the link if you want uh, to go and get more information about it. So when you are accessing serial ports, reading data from serial ports, parsing them and so on, you can mock the serial port and then uh, uh, inject uh, data into your program rather than having to actually read code from the serial port. Similarly, if you're doing file IO, some people think file IO cannot be unit tested. Uh, uh, for these kinds of scenarios, you can actually use a, a, a Python uh, class called string IO to do this. So if you want more information, it's over here. Then another thing is like file system access. You're listing directories, changing permissions, moving files, all those can also be unit tested. There's a wonderful uh, library from uh, Google called uh, by fake FS, so uh, you can fake a file system in memory itself. So for more information, you can link, uh, check out this link. And another uh, thing is like, suppose there's a unit test. Uh, th there's a function that actually has infinite loop. You call the function, it will never return. Even such functions can be unit tested. There's a blog article over here. You can check out this article. They have uh, given you ideas of how you can write the unit test for such functions. And GUI programs can also be unit tested. Uh, there's another blog article in this link. You can go and check. So there are lots of myths surrounding unit testing. This can't be done with unit testing. That can't be done with unit testing. It's not true. There, there are a lot of ways we come up with to uh, solve those th uh, kinds of problems. Uh, so the conclusion is yes, Python is fun. Unit testing makes it even more so, right? And I'll be publishing slides and links on uh, my Twitter handle and also uh, uh, include PyCon in the internet. Thank you. <laughs>